Okay, this, um, we already talked about the uh, WBO situation with um, jo New Zealand's Joseph Parker and um, American Mexican uh, Andrew Ruiz and David Hay being the mandatory for the winner. So now we have to talk about this weird, weird WBA situation. Now, as you know, um, or if you don't know, Joshua versus Klitschko was in talks. But the only reason or way that fight was going to happen was if there was more than one title on the line. Anthony Joshua would be in the IBF, and Klitschko and Eddie Hearn were lobbying to the WBA to put that vacated WBA Tyson Fury title on the line for that fight. Now, there's multiple things wrong with that. Now, even though I wanted to see Joshua versus Fury, I mean Joshua versus um versus uh, Klitschko and Fury versus Klitschko too. When it comes to Tyson Fury vacating that belt, in my opinion, it would not have been fair for Tyson, for Anthony Joshua and Klitschko to be fighting for a vacant title when they're already, when Anthony Joshua was already champion. It didn't, it didn't make any sense. So now Klitschko has an injury, a calf injury, right? Anthony Joshua was supposed to be fighting on December the 10th. It was supposed to be the 26th. They were they were looking at Joseph Parker, but now it's it's you know Joseph Parker's fighting Andy Ruiz. So the WBA has always been known, you know, to me to be the weakest of the sanctioning bodies when it comes to enforcing their rules and just a whole lot of stuff with them just doesn't make any sense. But it seems that they're trying their best to be more consistent because in this day and age of social media it's hard for you to get with some get away with the shit that they used to get away with in the mid in in the late you know 2000s you know early early 2010s and in in before that to where now we have all that information right here you know i have the 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 the, the WBA rules i printed i printed them out to look at well how was it possible or how was they going to try to maneuver for that vacated title to be on the line? Now, of course, we wanted to see the fight, but come on. You know, we, we, we need these sanctioning bodies to, to be consistent and to follow by their own rules. So let me um, just read, because I don't feel like going through the documents, but I did screen. Um, shot, I haven't downloaded it on my phone, but let me read this little excerpt I uh, printed out here or you know, um, cropped out. So this is um, from the WBA rules. This is um, according, this is um, how you file for a vacant title. So, in the event that a world championship is declared vacant, generally, the two highest rated available boxers shall be designated by the committee to fight for the title and shall no more, and shall have no more than 30 days to submit about agreement. So, when you look at the WBA rankings, right? Now, from my understanding, I'm looking at the official WBA site. The last time the rankings were updated and published was September the 15th, 2016. We're now in October the 25th, 2016, and the new rankings for October have not been updated yet. But really, you can't expect too much of a change. So, number one is Luis Ortiz. Something really weird is going on with Luis Ortiz because Luis Ortiz is fighting Malik Scott um, in Monaco. Remember, Luis Ortiz signed with, with um, Eddie Hearn. But it's not for the WBA interim title. It's for the lower belt, the WBA Intercontinental. Now, Luis Ortiz was very well on his way to being stripped, but something happened, in my personal opinion, we don't know for sure. I think that Eddie Hearn may have went to the WBA and said, listen, don't strip Luis Ortiz, because when you're a champion, right, an interim champion, you are basically the champion. The only reason why you're an interim champion is because somebody was injured or something happened, so they couldn't strip the fighter, so they said, let's make an interim title. The interim champion is the mandatory for... The the um the 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 current champion. So if Tyson Fury wasn't doing cocaine, he would have fought Vladimir Klitschko, and then Luis Ortiz would have been the mandatory for the winner of Fury versus Klitschko too. 
So the WBA ordered Luis Ortiz to fight Alexander Ustinov. The fight completely fell apart for multiple reasons. Multiple reasons that I really don't feel like explaining because it's deep. But basically, it was said to be over drug testing. But remember, there was supposed to be two different purse bids. One purse bid actually did happen. And something happened. So I think that maybe Eddie Hearn or somebody from Luis Ortiz's team went and said, listen, let's, we're going to quietly give you back this interim title. We don't know. We don't, we don't know yet. We won't find out until the fight. Because w when you look at the press release and you look at the billing for the fight, it says he's fighting for the, the Intercontinental. WBA title. That's a step down. So, in my opinion, somebody went to the WBA and said, listen, don't strip Luis Ortiz. He's going through some shit right now. You know, um, he signed up with Eddie Hearn, or Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn probably said, I, he signed up with us. You know, so we're going to build him back up to fight for the WBA title in the future, maybe against, you know, whoever wins that title. And then they fight Anthony Joshua. Bigger fight, more sanctioning fees for you, WBA. So he's from from what I've researched, he's no longer the WBE interim champion. So, since he's fighting Malik Scott, don't be stupid. Be an educated boxing fan and think they're not going to just pull him out of that fight and say, well, you fight Anthony Joshua. Also, since he signed with Eddie Hearn, he signed him to make him into a star himself and then possibly have Anthony Joshua versus Luis Ortiz maybe in 2018 or something like that. But it's not going to happen now. you got to think how the promoters think. So let's look at the WBA rankings from when they were last updated. And let's start putting some things together. So we know Luis Ortiz, right, is number one. He's fighting um, Malik Scott. Then you have Vladimir Klitschko, number two, who's injured. Alexander Ustinov, number three. Fresno Quindo, number four. And Lucas Brown, number five. Something happened with Lucas Brown and Vladimir Klitschko were negotiating a fight, and then this mysterious injury came up. So you have to ask yourself, well, number four is Fresno Quindo. Where the hell has he been? And in fact, the last time he fought was over two years ago when he lost the former WBA champion, Ruslan Chagiev, who Lucas Brown beat, but then had to get the belt back to Chagiev because he failed the drug test. WBA went to Chagiev and said, yo, we got your belt, bro, here. So I give said, now nah, I'm retired. This whole WBA heavyweight situation is a joke. And in my opinion, Fresno Quindo shouldn't even be in there. When I saw him in that WBA tournament, you know, that's now dead, I was like, how the hell are you getting this shit? So, you take Luis Ortiz out, number one, he's number one. You take Vladimir Klitschko out, he's number two. You have Alexander Ustinov versus either Fresno Quindo or Lucas Brown for the WBA title. And even though you may not want to hear it, guess who's number five? David Hay. So right now, it makes perfect sense for Lucas Brown and Alexander Ustinov to fight for that title if they're going to play by their own, if the WBA are going to go by their own rules. That title is vacant. So now you ask, well, how does Klitschko versus uh, Joshua happen if the WBA title is not involved? I feel like this. Why should the WBA wait for Klitschko to be uninjured, for them to put him into a fight. This is a vacated title. Y'all gonna hold your belt up? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't make sense. But the whole WBA situation, you know, is weird. I can say it looks like they are getting better. It looks like they're getting better. You know, but that's because of the media scrutiny they've been, the scrutiny they've been getting. Remember, two years ago, was it two or three years ago? They had a dead fighter ranked. And we all know the situation that's going on with the super champion and the world champion. And oh, I don't want to get into it. I don't, I don't want to get into it. Because I'll be sitting here. This will be another 20-minute video. But I thought I'd give you an update on that. There's no, um, it's not known who Anthony Joshua is going to fight. In fact, this is not an Anthony Joshua video. This is just a WBA video. So I will talk about Anthony Joshua and the possibility of uh, David Price. And also who is available in the WBA rankings. And um, why he can't. Um, fight Brian Jennings unless the, the IDF does something you know they never done before and I'm from Philly I want Brian Jennings to get the fight but it would be like I said we got to be consistent when it comes to these rules you know I'm T Street Controversy this is T Street Controversy Live follow me on Twitter at FV360 for Fight View 360 T Street um, on Twitter all the links to my social media are right down below in clickable links in the um, description box 
I'm um, Teacher Controversy. This is Teacher Controversy Live. Uh, website launching in November officially. It's called FightView360.com. Thank you for your support. Please subscribe.